Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PMF, The Fifth Element Health, and I'm really excited to bring you part two of my 2024 PMF Buyer's Guide. Now, before I begin, I just want to give an FTC disclosure that I do affiliate for different PMF devices, and I do make a commission on some of these that I affiliate for that might be competitive to the ones that I don't recommend. So I just want to make that disclaimer. So let's get right into it. In part one, we looked at the signal, the intensity, and the coils. And so these are were all the most important things about what to look for in a PMF device. In this video, I'm going to tell you what I recommend and what to avoid. So just to kind of review some of the most important things to look for in a good PMF device, the first thing to look for is really good coils, nice tightly wound circular coils. Um, you want to have a signal that has a good slew rate, as we talked about in part one, a good spectral content and good repetition rate. I didn't mention this, but signal complexity is also good to help like pulse pause modulation and other things you can do to make the signal so that it doesn't become too repetitive to get acclimation. Um, you know, you do want to get good accessories like good local applicators are the most important things with a good PMF device, especially the Helmholtz coil applicators. And then, you know, a proven company, does it work? Does it have a good warranty? Make sure you get good training and support. And, you know, these are all important things. But as far as a good PMF device, what's most important is the signal and the coils, which we went in some really good detail in part one. So in part two, we're going to look at, like I said, what, what to look for, which we did in part one, but now what to avoid. So there's two big scams in the PMF industry right now, and I want to really help to make these scams clear to you so that you don't get deceived into buying one of these mats. The first big deception is these Chinese gemstone mats. Like um, here's a popular one right here. And I've got over here, I got five or six of them. The next big scam is the high intensity scam that you need more power or more high intensity. So I wanna really start with these cheap Chinese gemstone masks. And I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that in more detail, but I do wanna go over the main reasons you wanna avoid these. What, what, what's the identifier? The identifier is crystals or gemstones, okay? So that's how you know they're junk. All have the same coils. They all pulse 60 Hertz. Even though they look a little different, they're pretty much all the same. They're the same garbage PMF devices that you can get at Alibaba for a couple hundred dollars. So why are these mats so bad? <laughs> There's at least 10 reasons why these are the worst of the worst. The first is these, these really cheap AM radio ferrite coils, and they all, all of these mats have these same coils. I, I was surprised. I thought there was going to be an exception somewhere. And the problem with these coils is, number one, they're, they're not tightly wound circular coils like Qi chargers like we talked about in the first video, which are the optimal ways to transmit energy. The fields are coming out sideways, but because there's a ferrous core, the field gets condensed into, into, the, into the, so you get this hot spot above the mat. But we did a test, and you're going to see some images on the screen here, how that just a little bit above and to the sides, the intensity just drops off. So you get this hot spot, and then everything just drops off. And you're only getting, uh, look at this image from higher dose here, only three coils in higher dose full body mat, and you get all this dead space at your feet, uh, in your legs. So it's like, uh, it, it's just terrible, terrible coil design. And remember, coils are the speakers of a PMF system, but it gets much worse. <laughs> the next problem is these, these devices, these cheap Chinese gemstone mats, they just pulse 60 Hertz from the power company. When you look on all their frequency programs, now the negative ions, <laughs> okay, um, one of their big selling points is, look, we got negative, all these crystals we have in our match just give out all these healthy negative ions. No, it doesn't. Um, I have here a very sensitive, uh, expensive negative ion counter. So the manufacturer, and I talked to their lead engineer, and he told me it is a scam. He says you can't get negative ions from crystals unless they're heated to 1100 degrees. This is a provable scam. Anybody can get this meter and see there's zero negative ions compared to the background. But you do have to calibrate it right. And I, and I had the guy from Alpha Labs walk me through the calibration. Now, the red light therapy, which a couple of these mats here I have, now they, don't, they don't all have red light therapy, but Michael Hamlin, you want at least five milliwatts per centimeter squared. And plus, there's not enough bulbs. You're getting these little pinpoints of red light. 
at radiances that are provably too low to be therapeutic, that are on par with Christmas tree, $13 Christmas tree light. Now, the other thing that you want to avoid is the expense of high intensity mats. And we did go over this in the last video of Dr. Pollock and the inverse square flaw, I call it inverse square flaw. Um, there's, and I talk about why there's no justification for using high intensity, there isn't. So just to review, I did a very detailed test showing the Biosavart law perfectly matched my actual field measurements. And the inverse square law, as Dr. Pollock says, is the way to calculate field drop-offs was up like 5,000% error on average. So it's definitely not the inverse square law, meaning you need a lot less intensity than what Dr. Pollock and others say. So there's no physics-based justification for high intensity because low intensity systems, you know, like the IMRS, you know, like the QRS, like the Beaver, have kind of bigger coil centropics. The field, you can measurably measure it like several feet above someone. In fact, Here's a little clip of Dr. Pollock in 2013, I think, debunking himself. Looking, and again, this is the QRS. I want to show you this clip because he's actually debunks himself with actual field measurements. Take a look. This is a magnetic field detector uh, that's available from Radio Shack. So you can hear the signal is operating off the, the, the body pad. If I were to put a box or a body, for that matter, your body or anybody's body, it will go right through the body as high as even about two feet, three feet. And he did the similar demonstration with Medifair, but you can see from this demonstration that he said he even kind of is boasting when he used to be more pro QRS and pro lower intensity, that look, it's just the earth intensity and you get plenty, and he's measuring it like two to three feet up. If it was the inverse square law, which it's not, you wouldn't measure that that high up. And I want to show one more clip of Dr. Pollock, not to pick on him, but he's just the main one promoting high intensity, where he actually agrees that it's the slew rate. So just take a watch here. So the faster this change in intensity, the more charge is produced in the body. Critical. And most of the time with magnetic systems, you almost never see DVDT given to you. And that's called the skew rate. We almost never get that number. If you got that number, then we'd be able to do more accurate comparisons between different devices and systems. So you can hear him in his own words saying that the key is slew rate, that we should compare PMF devices based on their slew rate. And in the last video, I talked about all the slew rate studies. I agree with him. But unfortunately, in that podcast, he just went, he just goes off on the high intensity for the rest of the, of the podcast, and he doesn't bring up slew rate ever again. So he talks about slew rate sometimes, but he doesn't, he it goes right back into high intensity. So, but I agree, you know, that if we actually compared PMF devices by slew rate, he would not like the results because his devices are going to be, way, or he's going to find if he does this, that they're way too high. And actually based on research studies that show 150 and 100, for example, in one study were not as effective as 30 Tesla per second. So slew rate, yes, we should measure the PMF devices by slew rate. And if when we do so, we're going to find high intensity is too high. And like I said in the last video, there's really not many studies on high intensity. And that meta-analysis I brought up over, over 3,200 studies, there was like three to 4% were over 100 millitesla, and even much less over a tesla. So research doesn't support Dr. Polk or anybody selling high intensity, and they don't work as well. Um, so there is, um, again, with the hot, we, we talked about the slew rate not working as well, but there are actually some studies with high intensity or, well, one study by Dynas in 2002 showed that to get the best results, um, you want to stay under seven millitesla for healing bones. Rubin in 1989's research showed that um, fields, the fields must be small, the PMF field strengths must be small. And he said this because of Curry's law and dipole saturation. Uh, the ICNARP, the WHO, the DIN, the IEEE, um, all these governing agencies at most will say that five millitesla is is the like the highest. That's ICNARP, WHO, DIN, and the IEEE all recommend lower than that. But five millitesla is fifty gauss, and all of these high intensity machines are going way above these international safety standards. And again, there's potentially dangerous. I mean. These, when you're inducing those kind of field strengths, and one study showed um, on the heart that you want to stay below 600 Gauss, which is 60 millitesla, 
or you can induce an extra heartbeat, meaning you're getting an unfavorable reaction with the heart when you go above 60, 60 um, millitesla or 600 gauss. It, they call it extra induced beats. I'm going to do a separate video on why more is not better. So I don't want to, there, there's even more to say here, but the question I get from people is, well, why do, why do clinics and doctors use these devices? And that's a good question because there's a lot of clinics that have like the Pulse and the PMF120 and the MagnaWave and, you know, other high intensity systems. Well, the reason is, is mainly analgesic. And this is actually from Dr. Pollock's paper that he wrote for a book, or it's just a chapter in a book where he um, talks about different, you know, different things about why high intensity inverse square law. A lot of stuff that I showed is not correct. But he did, when he referenced, you know, he referenced several low intensity studies, several medium range intensity studies, and only one high intensity. It was really interesting. He only had one high intensity study to share, and it was for analgesic purposes. So, so high intensity will kind of um, anesthetize or numb the nerves. So if you're feeling pain, like a cortisone shot, it will kind of help with pain management. I don't think these are good for home use. If you're going to do a high intensity treatment, go to a clinic and under doctor supervision and just do it for a short period of time. So I'm not saying I'm totally always against it, even though I don't think you need it. But I found great results with, with pain relief with low intensity systems. So I don't think it's necessary personally. So those are the two systems to, to avoid. You want to avoid the cheap Chinese gemstone, negative ion, far infrared PMF mats. And you want to avoid the, anything that's high intensity that's that, that, that gets to what's called the motor threshold where your muscles start twitching. Okay, so now I wanna go through all the different devices so you can kind of see that there is a lot of different PMF devices out there and there's more than this. These are just the, only the ones that I've had. So I've, I, I've owned and used a lot more than most people, but there's still plenty more that I haven't tried yet. So I have had the IMRS Prime, Omnium, uh, the, the older IMRS, MRS 2000 Designo, the Centropics, the Beamer, uh, the Beaver 3000, the QRS 101, which is the same as Pure Wave. QRS is Pure Wave, Pure Wave is QRS. Um, I had the BioBalance and used that, dissected it. Lenial Fractal I've owned and used. Bass and Ducks Pro I have and own and use. Bass and Ducks Pro Plus I have and own and use. The OMI I did have and dissect and did um, some detailed tests on that. Uh, the Amp Coil I have in my possession, um, high intensity system. Micropulse Isis I have, um, Earth Pulse, Soda Pulse, the Key Coil, which is the little martial arts guy that has this little donut shaped thing. Um, I got a couple higher doses. I got a couple Therasage, Metathera. And instead of going through which ones I think are the best, I, I do affiliate for a couple different brands. And I, I really prefer if people call me for a free consultation at 941-928-0124 so I can go over the best device for you based on your needs and your budget. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like this video. Leave some comments. I do answer all my comments. And subscribe to my channel if you have not already because I do have many more videos coming. So again, thanks again and have a great rest of your day.